personal way. <laughs> <laughs> and we're right now sitting in our fruit and vegetable covered RV down in Southern Cal. And we are really excited to be presenting this. How this is going to work today is I am the, going to be sharing with you lots of ways to easily transition to a whole food plant-based diet. And Bruce is going to be presenting really the why. So I'm the how and Bruce is the why. <laughs> and I'm going to be interrupting Bruce lots and lots saying, hey, here's the best of this and here's the best of this. So I'm the show and tell and Bruce is the science guy. And I think uh, what's really become evident, certainly with just within the, the situation with COVID-19, um, our health and our ability to be able to withstand new viruses that are uh, emerging in the world, it's never been more critical uh, to really be in top-notch shape in order to be able to deal with these new corona-type viruses. So there's never been a better time to move in this direction of plant-based nutrition. We're not going to spend a lot of time talking about all the reasons why, but uh, certainly if you have any questions at all, um, type it into uh, the question box and we'll definitely get to your question. Mm -hmm. And if you have more specific, if you're looking for more specific date details, we'll try to address it now or we'll get to it uh, um, after we go through the presentation. So Bruce, before we even begin, we what begin. did you have for breakfast? Oh, for breakfast today, I had whole grain kamut in the form of what's called kanji, which is one of the most uh, ancient um, healing grains ever known. And you can actually purchase it directly from Amazon right now. Minnie and I have transitioned from eating um, oatmeal in the morning to, because oatmeal, it, it, depending on the type of oatmeal you eat, it goes through a certain amount of processing. As a result, it can release sugar more quickly within your system, especially first thing in the morning if you're breaking your fast with an oatmeal. These whole grains are amazing because they release, uh, you, first of all, you just can't consume them all because they're so crunchy. So a lot of the calories you consume, they fill you up and, and, and make you feel satisfied, but the calories don't go into your body. So it really satisfies you. It's a powerful thing to help with your gut biome. They're packed with fiber, which is really beneficial to all the, 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 uh, the, the microbiota that you want to be living in your uh, large intestine. <laughs> so. And the reason why I asked Bruce that question is many times when someone is transitioning from one diet to the other, or of course, in the health promoting way of transitioning to a plant-based diet, the last thing we want anyone to be is not feeling satisfied, but to feel satiated. And that kamut, or you could have um, oat groats, or um, sogrum, or- Sogrum, uh, teff, all these grain, mm -hmm. uh, rice, you know, brown rice is a whole grain. Mm -hmm. uh, we just do wanna be a little bit careful with rice because unfortunately our rice uh, supply in this country has a bit of a, arsenic contamination issue. Are, are they looking at us? Or are they looking at the- uh, They're looking picture? at both. They're looking at oh, this okay, and great. This. Okay, yeah. so should I start so, going through? So let me, let me finish okay. and, then we'll, and then we'll go. So uh, my job is um, the, the how. And so that is the first how. So when we first uh, transitioned to a whole food plant-based diet, we went from eating eggs and bacon and bagels and that sort of thing to eating old fashioned oats. And old fashioned oats are processed. They're a much better choice. And then we found steel cut oats, which are still a process because you, it gets cut one or two times, these grains are uncut. So they're the closest to the source. So I'm gonna be providing with you in the next hour and a half and 15 minutes, um, what we did to start and then how we've now transitioned all the way and we're still transitioning. That's the cool thing. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a, a journey. It's an ongoing process. It's a journey, process. it's not an all, this is not a digital equation of I'm a plant-based eater, I'm not a plant-based eater. Right. That's not how it worked for us. Um, any of you who know my history, I went from the worst diet on the planet to probably the most optimum diet on the planet. I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia and in the South. I know I've explained this to Cody before and I had a horrible diet. As it turns out, I developed prostate cancer and I was diagnosed with actually late stage prostate cancer at age 52, which is very young. Um, I did a tremendous amount of research into this. And I know now based on the research, both large epidemiological studies as well as case control studies and randomized controlled clinical trials, at least in my case, prostate cancer. I, I had the genetics, the genetics to uh, have it express itself, 
but I warded those genes with really bad, the food that promoted the cancer. And um, so my diet, I firmly believe based on my research had a very, probably the most powerful impact on my development of cancer. And it is also my most powerful tool for battling it. So I was diagnosed nine years ago, still dealing with it today. Uh, however, I can tell you my plant-based diet coupled with some intermittent fasting is I know is the optimum way to treat my cancer from a holistic standpoint, yeah. in addition to, of course, whatever medical care you're going through. And so, this is why we chose to get on the road with a fruit and vegetable covered RV. So we are quite passionate mm -hmm. about this. We, uh, based on the science, we believe it's the, it's the way to go. And uh, so quickly, I'll just, there, that's our RV right there. And that's actually in Ohio. When we do a nine hour certification that actually, uh, we just put it online. It's called One Day to Wellness. And but I want to talk about our educational partners really quickly because Minnie and I are nothing more than mouthpieces for our fabulous educational partners. Dr. Michael Greger, who's participating in the FAI event yeah. this week. And I think he's, uh, we're going to be sitting with a, on a panel with him later today. I think he's giving a, another lecture. Uh, he found in nutritionfacts.org. Simply, there's no one else that knows more about the science behind evolution without industry influence than Dr. Michael Greger. Uh, the Food Revolution Network was founded by Ocean Robbins and John Robbins. They're a wonderful, wonderful resource for anyone that's interested in finding more about how they can move. It's like Mindy like to say, Mindy and I like to say, lean to the green. Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine out of Washington, D.C. is founded by Dr. Neil Bernard, the T. Colin Campbell Center for Nutrition Studies. I consider Dr. Campbell to be the father of scientifically evidence-based nutrition. Uh, he wrote the book, The China Study, which is really the, the very, that was the, the seminal event that I read that book flying across the country that completely changed my life and turned it around for the better. Uh, we are proud members of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Uh, they have a very large, wonderful conference every year. Unfortunately, it's been canceled this year uh, and they're not gonna go online. And of course, uh, we're FAI, thrilled and delighted woo! to be uh, with Cody and FAI and the Functional Aging Institute because functional agers. I'm 62. I just turned 62. That puts me right in there in the oh, functional aging category. I'll be 59. <laughs> uh, some other things. If you go to our website, onedaytowellness.org, we are a 501c3 nonprofit. We don't take any money from industry. Um, we believe that you have to have a pure message of just the science behind what you're doing. Otherwise, if you're if you're um, if you're representing a food company or a supplement company, your message has a tendency to be skewed that way. We don't take any money uh, from anybody within the pharmaceutical or food industry. We do take donations, so please feel free to donate to our One Day to Wellness uh, uh, charitable foundation. We have over 30 recipes about how we can help you transition to eating. Uh, absolutely. The great news is this diet is fabulous. It's so delicious. Once you get going, if you have fear about transitioning, you are not. It's just, it's stunningly delicious. And, and everything we can on our website's do. free. Everything so is free, and, free, free, free. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about lifespan versus health span. I love this graph because I think it, get, it puts the lens on a, a little bit wider scope of, of what, what's happening in our country. And if you can see lifespan, I'm not sure you can see my cursor here, but lifespan is represented in blue. Onset of disease, our disease, we all have a disease span, uh, is represented in red, boo. And this is a, now, is, I think, is a good representation of what's happening, especially in the United States, and that you know, what happens in late 40s, early 50s, we start to see we've got some red, and now we have disease, usually in the form of a chronic disease that has no treatment, begins to enter our lives, and the worlds of drugs uh, begins to enter our lives as far as controlling cholesterol, high blood pressure, these type of things. And we can, we develop drugs so we can treat the symptoms of these disease, these chronic diseases, but uh, what is this like last section, 10, 20 years of our life? You know, it's not, we want to live, I want to live exceptionally. And an ideal outcome would be just below that. So living a much longer life, looking at 85 and 90, a little bit, of, we have to expect a little bit of disease at the end of any time in our lives. It's unreasonable to think it's not, but there's no reason we can't now with the science that we have at hand, push that disease span towards the end of our lives, maybe in our 85 or 90 or hundreds or even beyond. Uh, or even a shorter life, like here, if cancer ends up getting me, and it very well may, I want to live absolutely as the maximum um, delight. I want to just enjoy life uh, and, and not deal with a bunch of drugs. 
But a nightmare scenario, scenario is the one we have at the bottom. And unfortunately, this is the economic model that drives our healthcare system. Our healthcare system is driven by dollars that um, treat symptoms of diseases and don't treat the root cause. 80, 75 to 80% of all hospital admittances are related directly to chronic disease. That means diabetes, heart disease, cancer, lupus, high blood pressure, uh, uh, arthritis. These are all things that uh, are just happening to ourselves. It's not like we caught them like COVID-19. It's just, it's, uh, it's happening to us and we can, we can do something about it. And really quick, it's a lot of the snack foods that we choose. So easily transitioning, my next tip, do you like crunch, Bruce? I grew up on fried chicken, and crunch is a essential key ingredient for any food that I eat. So if you or And that's a tough one. When yeah. you make that transition from a traditional standard American mm -hmm. diet, full of crunchy things, fried in oil, to eating uh, foods that are lower in fat and plant-based. So Bruce had chips every day. Chips, 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 chips. Full of fat, full of salt. This is amazing so these are organic stone ground corn tortillas you put them in your toaster and you toast them up and they taste so crunchy and delicious here is my second tip on how to easily transition to a whole food plant-based diet they are phenomenal how much fat are, is are in these chips none so what we want to be really careful for in addition to eating a whole food plant-based diet is we want to try to minimize or eliminate added fats in the form of oils. We'll talk about that in a little while. There's no oil in this. You know when you go to the Mexican restaurant and you sit down and you order your dinner and then before your dinner even comes you've eaten four of those baskets of chips. What's the first ingredient in those chips? It's they're deep fried mm -hmm. and a lot of fat, uh, high caloric density, no nutrition. That's what you want to avoid. We figured out a way to do it. But we're not here this is the really important point. We're not here to tell you what to do. We're here to share with you our experience over the last decade, mm -hmm. basically, of how plant-based nutrition has absolutely transformed our lives for the better, and also share with you some of the science and the reason why, and then also just how simple it is to move in this direction. But it is clear, you guys, uh, regardless of your food preference, and I, I, I grew up on processed food and animal foods, but processed foods and animal pro products we know uh, pose risk to our health uh, and can sabotage our weight loss strategies. And if you have a client that's saying, I'm going vegan, um, definitely encourage them. Say, oh, that's fantastic. But let's talk about um, good foods versus um, not as healthy foods. And there are a lot of vegan foods that are not so healthy. They're full of oil. They're full of sugar. They're, so we've got to be careful of labels. So we really love the, the term whole food plant-based. And we'll say no SOS, no added sugar, oil, or salt to the equation. And that's where you want to steer. Now, that's a, that's a big nut. So as you're transitioning, any way that you can lean to the green, so like those chips, instead of having a bag of chips, having those stone ground tortillas, put them in the toaster, well, you've just eliminated the salt and the fat. I'm a recovering chipaholic. Yep. We want you to question us, challenge us, but please don't judge what we have to say here until you've had the opportunity to do a little research yourself and there's never been a better time to do it. And again, the only thing I have to mention is Dr. Michael Greger, nutritionfacts.org. There is no organization that has more in-depth, unbiased scientific research on if you want to lose weight or you want to improve your health, he's got it there. So and he's the keynote speaker later today. Yeah, he is speaking later yeah. today. So uh, where do we want to be? A whole food plant-based diet. But as, as Mindy said, said mm -hmm. you can eat a terrible diet and call yourself a vegan, right? So we know that vegan hot dogs are not a health food. Uh, they're full of added fats. French fries, I'm a recovering French fryaholic. You don't need to eat any French fries because I've eaten them all. And a uh, horrible, horrible food that you want to eliminate from your diet, it turns out. Uh, you can eat candy and call yourself a vegan. And then you can drink Red Bull, eat French fries, and eat vegan hot dogs. And you can say, hey, I'm vegan. And you can still be suffering from diseases related to food. Okay, third tip that we provide in our One Day to Wellness program. I always say if you want a food, if you love a food and you really want it, eat it, but you have to make it at home. So if you want French fries, those kinds of French fries, you have to make it at home. You gotta get out the deep fryer, you gotta cut everything up and it's, it's a mess. My suggestion would be to buy some sweet potatoes, oh, chop them up, yes. 
put a little pepper on them with a nice balsamic and roast them dry oh. in your oven and you won't miss the fat laden french fries. Now here, yeah, we're gonna segue quickly into what really makes plant-based nutrition uh, delicious. And that is the condiments and the spices that are used during the preparation of the food. It's so essential. And you guys, it's, it's fabulous. Balsamic. Go Bye. watch some of our, we our recipes and keep an eye out for us because we're always sharing So new, this is Bruce's recipes. birthday present. So yes. I give him food for his birthday. So, so this, I got several. Yeah, you, Bruce got two amazing um, Madeira. Balsamic vinegars. Yeah. They're fabulous. Vinegar is a satiating. Medina. And it doesn't matter if it's apple cider vinegar, grape vinegar. Vinegars are healthy and satiating mm -hmm. and uh, blunt uh, the ability of your sugar spikes to go up when you're mm -hmm. eating, uh, eating any type of meal. Plants, the why and what we know. I did not grow up eating plants. I grew up eating a lot of cows and a lot of French fries and a lot of cow milk products in Atlanta, Georgia in the South. And we didn't know, but now we do. Here are the benefits of moving towards a whole food plant-based diet. Reversal of chronic disease. Um, and I'm, not, I'm just stating a fact here. There is no other diet that has been scientifically proven through randomized controlled clinical trials, the gold standard of the medical community with the ability of eating a way to actually eliminate late stage heart disease. This is the only diet that does it. It'll prevent heart disease and it can also treat late stage heart disease. Look up Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn of the Cleveland Clinic, he'll tell you all about it. Weight loss, there is no better way than uh, to uh, to obtain long-term mm -hmm. sustained weight loss and transitioning to a whole food plant-based diet, I personally never would have been able to do it without this because everybody has such a hard, you can't control your cravings. That's nature telling you to, to, to put calories in your body. And unfortunately, as Dr. Greger says, um, we have basically, uh, the, we've got ha bad habits. We've got an environment that's a where we just have habits that have created horrible problems. It's not anybody's fault that they're overweight. Mm -hmm. It's the environment we're in where so much garbage is marketed to us. Now, let me talk about that. And here's another tip. So Bruce and I, when we transitioned and we went to a lot of eating a lot of nut butter and avocado, really good nuts and avocados. They're fantastic. But if you're trying to lose weight or you have a client that's trying to lose weight, you want to limit but not eliminate your uh, fats, your natural cat fats occurring in the food. So that's the, the almonds and the, and the avocados and the chest, um, um, all of the nuts. We found this is worth the entire price of this entire convention. These are chestnuts. So this is chestnut. Don't move it around. I'm trying to there we go. Closer. There you go. So those are those are roasted chestnuts. So what I do, and they don't taste just like peanut butter or almond butter. You, it's an it's it's a taste that you're gonna. It's have an to get acquired used taste to. that you'll get if you go to Porto. In, um, Portugal. Yeah, yeah. So you want to roast them again in the oven, and then you want to use a food processor with water. So I'd say like maybe um, to a cup of chestnuts, you want to put maybe a fourth a cup of water. See how the the consistency is. It's just it's just creamy, just like peanut butter. And then you can use it in your recipes. You can use it on your toast. It's fantastic. Now here's the trick. It's only ten percent fat compared to about 70 to 80% fat of say almonds. For almost all the other nuts, right, yeah, very, right. very high in fat, which is healthy, but you wanna limit the amount that you eat. Mm -hmm. And again, if, it, if nature provides it, that's great. But I'm here to tell you, nature does not provide, you don't see 10 pound bags of shelled walnuts underneath walnut trees in nature. Uh, you have to go get the walnut mm -hmm. off the tree, crack it open, peel, and dig it out of there with something sharp. That's how many walnuts you should actually be eating. Just because you can buy 50 pounds of Costco, that does not mean that's what you should be eating more <laughs> right. of all those nuts. But improve overall well-being. Again, this is an experiential thing that if you make this move in this direction, your mood improves and you feel better. Everything that's better, again, if you've made the transition, you know it. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, it's, it's hard to realize until you've been on the other side for a little while eating this way. Mm -hmm. You actually save money on food. It costs less to eat a whole food plant-based diet than a standard American diet. We know through good scientific research, you can live a longer and healthier life, primarily through studying the Seventh-day Adventists. 
um, and all the work that National Institutes of Health has done on looking at longevity and diets around the world, as well as Dan Buettner in the blue zone. So, and then give your children the gift of the lo of long-term health. Nothing more important. The time to to transition into eating this way is right right out of the womb mm -hmm. uh, to improve your odds of never developing chronic disease. So we don't advocate a specific diet. We advocate a scientifically evidence-based diet, and that's what we eat now. And all the science suggests uh, uh, the more 100% whole plant foods right up to 100% is the way to go. Um, I do want to point out a heart-healthy diet is a brain-healthy diet. It is a lung healthy diet. It is that simple nature to not make it complicated. The same diet that's healthy for treating chronic heart conditions is the same diet that's going to be healthy treating high blood pressure or even cancer. Let me go back to the all scientific evidence suggests that the more you steer in this direction, the better it is. When you are transitioning, and this is very important, you want to make sure that it is comfortable for you. So say you have a gut biome that is used to uh, dairy and, and meat products and all of that, and then you switch real quick. There will be a transitional period. So for example, Bruce and I, we eat a lot of beans. Beans, we, not beef. Beans. So these are called Rancho Gordo beans. We love this company. They actually, on their website, they have a bean club, which is fun. And all of this that I show you, we're not getting a kickback from anything. It's just, that it's just we want to show you what we use as we transition and now that we're on this. So we um, beans are a staple of, if you look at, the, the Blue Zones research that Dan Buettner did, the, one of the constants in all of the longest lived societies that, that he um, highlights is the inclusion of beans. Including kind soy of beans. In, in Asia. Yes. So if you have, I have a secret ingredient. If you have flatulence, first of all, don't just bombard your body with beans if you haven't been. Ease into it. The second thing is something called epazote. Epazote, which is a Mexican herb that I found out about from a like a hundred year old Mexican grandmother who had her own restaurant in San Bruno, California. And she said that is the secret ingredient to making not only uh, beans that mitigate gas, uh, but also it tastes fantastic. Oh, it does. Go buy some epazote, put it in your beans right before you cook them. You will not be disappointed. Mitigates the gas increases the flavor beans not beef for your protein and you can get all you can find everything on amazon um, mindy and i are really focused on longevity right now uh, we hope that you are too we want to live a long long healthy life so we can enjoy our grandkids that haven't shown up yet <laughs> we have three boys but and no grandkids but uh vegetarian men and women actually and this is based on research uh from the seventh day adventist uh health studies there have been three major studies looking at the seventh day adventists who, who are currently the longest lived people on this planet even longer than the okinawa japanese they all eat primarily a whole food plant-based diet but they study them extensively and have determined that uh, vegetarian men and women live a, almost a decade longer than people who eat animal products so the sooner we start making the transition the better and again you won't be disappointed with the flavors um, if you start incorporating all these uh, spices and uh, things that we use and that's from Loma Linda University and then real quick let's just look uh, this is from a book called Healthy at 100 by uh, John Robbins who was the founder of the Food Revolution Network uh, his son Ocean now is the chief executive there but again it's a great organization and uh, but Great book, and he just looked at, let's look at three longest lived societies. Look at the calories from carbohydrates is almost 75% across the board. So most of their calories are coming from complex carbohydrates. Uh, very little from fat, lower than 20%. A uh, low fat diet should be considered below 15%. Uh, protein, you can also see this could be considered a low protein diet, and that might be scratching your head there, wondering why that is. We'll talk about protein and that fact that we really don't need that much, and we can get all everything we need from uh, plant sources. And then animal foods, you can see they do eat animal foods, but very few, but no processed food at all, and no obesity. So that's, a, that's, I think, a good, that's evidence right there about what the longest lived people do. Um, there have been so many research studies, big epidemiological research looking at populations as well as 
um, specific cross-sectional studies like the China study that T. Colin Campbell completed, um, as well as randomized controlled trials showing the reversal of heart disease uh, and the slowing of cancer growth uh, by Dr. Dean Ornish. As a result, Kaiser Permanente, which is the largest managed care organization uh, in the world, has uh, recently put out a mandate uh, to all 15,000 of their physicians stating that uh, the, they want them to give the advice to their patients to eat. The healthiest way to eat is a whole food plant-based diet, eliminating or discouraging meat, dairy products, eggs, and all refined processed foods as well. Uh, plant-based diets are the nutritional equivalent of quitting smoking. And uh, that's from Dr. Neil Bernard. He's the president of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, one of our educational partners and another wonderful resource. But Bruce. But I just went to Kaiser and my doctor told me this, but I'm very busy. I have a full life. I don't like to cook. What do I do? You buy yourself a crock pot or an instant pot. You have these on hand. I love these. Whoops. All right. These right here, you always have some canned, uh, uh, I love these canned tomatoes, they're fire roasted. And then what you do in the crock pot is you just get every, I mean, I put fennel and I put um, carrots and celery and, and everything. And if you're super, super short on time, you use lentils, like black lentils, green lentils, split peas, because they cook in about a third of the time. So maybe 10, 20 minutes and there, and you're good to go there. You always want to have onions and garlic, the allium family. That is just so amazing for your, the, 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 just the nutrition and the flavor of of that. I batch cook. So you want your students and your clients and yourself, hang on, to, to batch cook. So when I talked um, this earlier about the fennel, I'm sorry, the, the kamut or the oat, I make enough of that groat for three days. Same thing with this crock pot, I will make enough soup or stew for three days. And then I put it in the refrigerator and then I don't have to worry because I've got um, an instant meal right away. So, but anything will go in that crock pot, anything except for Bruce. <laughs> so where do we want to be? Um, this is right off of the Wall Street Journal. I took it right off of their website, but it's, this is a, a really good representation in a pyramid form of what we want to be eating every day based on really good scientific research, not on what the foods we love and grown up, like me for fried chicken, french fries, all those milkshakes. Um, we have to kind of push those uh, foods that we love, that we now know are not health promoting, uh, uh, to the side and move in this direction. Yeah. But vegetables, fruits, leafy greens, whole grains, legumes, and we want to keep our high, if you're, especially if we're trying to uh, manage or lose weight, and um, most of us are, we want to limit high fat whole foods as well, including avocados, nuts, seeds, and those type of things. But limit, not limit. eliminate. Think of that. You want to eat as many as you could as at, at those nuts. You had to dig those nuts out of the shell yeah. yourself. Yeah. And so Bruce, a handful of nuts. And you talked about um, milkshakes. Anything that you drink, you're going to eat or drink Don't faster. Drink your calories. So <laughs> Michael Greger just wrote an amazing book, and he'll talk about it later, I'm sure, today, called How Not to Diet. And he talks about high water content foods. So when you are transitioning, the more high point, water yeah. content foods that you can put into your diet, the better, before you eat something else. So for example, those vegetables and those fruits. And you want to think about, okay, well, what vegetables? Vegetables that grow above the ground have more of a water content the vegetables that grow underneath the ground. So that could be your first, like a salad or a soup or drinking water prior to your, um, your eating. So if you've got a client or student that says, I'm really hungry, say, you know, drink a couple glasses of water and then eat your meal. And you're going to see that that really will help and satiate you more. But if you're have like Bruce with the milkshake, you want to think about having a, and they love that milkshake, they love that drink, have it be more from the fruit category than the cream category, right? So not the, not the soy yogurt, not the, 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 the things you can't see the, through. The, the, 
plant milks, I think, I mean, uh, is to add to that, the plant milks can be higher in fat. Mm -hmm. So you want to just be careful mm -hmm. with those as well, because mm -hmm. most of the plant milks are made from nuts. Yeah. And we love plant milks. Like this is our favorite soy milk. And this is my absolute favorite oat milk. I use this in baking. I also use this on my groats in the morning because I like a little sweeter. Bruce doesn't. We put this in our coffee every morning. We drink coffee. Yes, we do. And um, we drink soy milk. Yeah, yeah. But we don't drink it. We use it as a condiment. As a condiment. That's very Correct. Point, yes. And Correct. for cooking and for like our coffees. Yeah. So let's quickly touch on, you know, what is all this concern about meat and what's going on? I don't have time to go into all the details, but please reach out to me because I'd be more than happy to share it. But the World Health Organization, which has been in the news quite a bit lately, uh, announced two years ago based on well, um, multiple large research studies, in particular, the European Perspective Investigation into Cancer, which is uh, uh, looking at over half a million people in Europe, uh, following them as a cohort and seeing who gets cancer, who doesn't, who gets chronic disease and who doesn't. What do they determine? Processed meats and all likelihood red meats are considered class one carcinogens now. Uh, and a class one carcinogen, cigarettes are in there, plutonium's in there processed meats are in there. I grew up on processed meats. I know the salty deliciousness of them. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we know these foods are extremely dangerous. There should be a warning label on them and we should try and to how avoid many them. of us went from eating meat to then going to ground turkey right. or gra or chicken and, and we so that's a good point because look at that what, we'll, what we're going to find out you guys is that and you probably are there's not a lot of difference between going from red meat to chicken and then from chicken to fish, it's not that big of a step either because here's the thing, all of these foods uh, are animal tissues. They all are made of saturated fat, cholesterol and amino acids, uh, uh, very high in certain amino acids that we now know are infl inflammation promoters. And we just want to try to avoid those as best we can. Minnie and I have made the decision to completely eliminate these foods from our diet. And I would encourage you to do the same, uh, to talk about transitioning really quickly here. Um, we have we have two groups. One is we call them dippers and divers. And dippers are most people, and they're like, oh, that sounds good. I think I'll remove I'm like putting half and half of my coffee. Mm -hmm. And exactly. these are all mm -hmm. great steps. Uh, but you're only gonna get you're only gonna feel limited results if you're doing that. You you take small steps, you'll get small results. But if you can take big steps and make this big transition, along with help from people like us. Uh, you're going to feel and see big experiential results that are going to mm -hmm. really have an impact. And you're going to say, oh my gosh, you're going to wake up one day and say, I just can't believe how great I feel. There's no way I'll going back to eating the foods I used to eat because and I love, I, A, I love the food and I love feeling this way. And that's what happens. Yeah. And when people are transitioning, you've got to remember this, they don't know sometimes why. So it's very important for us to steer people to, to getting the correct information, the non-biased information on why they're choosing to do this in the first place. Like you might, uh, you might right now be saying, um, do you have something to smell? Yes. Oh no. <laughs> we said that about the chicken and the fish and you went, oh my gosh, what are they talking about? That's, that's a, a nudge. That's saying, you know, they're, these crazy people for, that live in a fruit and covered RV, RV they're, they're saying these crazy things. Maybe I'll go and look into it. So that's why in the very beginning, we said, here are educational partners. Here are the people that really know. And, they and these are the have, ones that we follow. Yeah. And we're yeah. not crazy. Yeah. Many <laughs> It's crazy, but no, this, this is rock solid advice and we really encourage you, um, you know, don't take our advice, but don't judge us. Like we said, it's a great time to do this research yeah. and nutritionfacts.org is a great organization and resource to begin that. But this is right off of one of Dr. Greger's videos that he does every single day. And this shows the acidic load of different types of food. And I, I just did a screen grab on it because a lot of people are not aware that the most acidic foods that we eat are actually animal foods. That first one you see there, uh, with the 13, the acidity of 13 is actually tuna fish. Tuna fish. Tuna fish is the most acidic food you can put in your body. And then there's right. lamb chop, that piece of chicken cheese is very, very acidic and high in sodium as well. So you can see all the animal foods lie on the acidic side and all the plant foods are on the, even citrus and tomatoes are on the alkaline forming side. And so to boil this down, it's easy to think of acidic forming foods as in, 
inflammatory and we want to eliminate inflammation in our body uh, and the inflammation pathways. We want to mitigate those. We want to keep our insulin levels down. And the way we do this is simply by transitioning away from those red arrows into the green arrows. And so what's the key? It's, it's to lean to the green. It's time for a tip. You ready? This is my favorite mustard of all time. It's called Coslix. And it's a company in Canada, but you can go to their website and get a deal on their shipping. They have every different kind, balsamic and fig, and this is honey garlic. Oh. We are big mustard fans. Oh my God. Low in fat, high in nutritious, and just it packs a power punch for flavor. So move away from the mayonnaises, move away from those high fat spreads, and start moving towards when you're mustard. Because when you're transitioning and you, you want to think about, okay, I don't like vegetables. Well, why don't you like vegetables? Well, because perhaps they weren't seasoned correctly, right? Um, I, if somebody just gave me a, a, a piece of meat without seasoning or anything, it would taste icky, right? <laughs> so it's got seasoning on it. Just Same like, thing just with vegetables. Just like grilling, uh, if you're grilling chicken or fish, and you, you want to grill, you're going to put a seasoning on there, and mm -hmm. that's going to make the difference between a delicious meal and just something that's standard. What about now, free what, range organic uh, I, daily I the, massage? I, happy cows. I put this slide on here because a lot of people say, well, I eat free. If, Free range is definitely better than con mm -hmm. confined animal feeding operation foods. But here's, I know most of you, I think, are probably trainers. 95% of the meat market comes from all of your clients are not eating free range. Nobody can, actually, most people are unable, in, they can't afford to eat free range beef. And if you were concerned about the environment, free range beef is not, uh, free range beef is very impactful on the environment mm -hmm. and it's not sustainable. And it, it turns out that all the research studies done today, they don't separate the free range meat from the confined animal feeding. It's just the saturated fat and cholesterol as Dr. John McDougall says, a muscle is a muscle is a muscle. And they all have similar characteristics from a nutritional perspective as well. Yeah. And a lot of the contamination comes from the slaughterhouses and they all go to the same slaughterhouse. So and you're I, not, you're not seeing that happy massaged cow, right. you know, being slaughtered on that farm. It goes to a industrial slaughterhouse, which everybody else, every other animal goes to. And as I mentioned, livestock, it uses already 30% of the entire surface of the planet. Uh, uh, and it, it includes 33% of the global arable land used to produce feed and livestock. We're using it and we're ruining the land and it's, it's not necessary is the only thing. So yeah. just think about that. That's about being mindful when you sit down to a meal. Mm -hmm. Where did this come from? Mm -hmm. How am I impacting the environment? How am I going to impact my health? Chances are if it has a negative impact on the environment, it's going to have a negative impact on your body. And transversely, if it has a positive impact on your health, in all likelihood, it's going to have a very positive impact on the environment. Yeah, and that is a huge point because when you are transitioning, you have to have a trigger of why you are, as I mentioned before, but maybe it's the environment. Maybe who you're talking with and, and they're trying to transition. It's maybe the environment. Maybe it's because they're an animal advocate. Maybe it's because their health, they've had a health scare. Which We've had my, Which was mm -hmm. my um, catalyst. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Don't wait for the health scare because they do happen. <laughs> uh, what do I love? Now, this is actually a factory farm. Uh, we drove right by this in King City in central, the Central Valley of California. That's where the meat comes from. I can assure you, you can't even breathe the air yeah. there. It's horrific. But there is an In-N-Out Burger at that exit. Uh, what to uh, eat instead of meat? Uh, how about mushrooms? Mushrooms. For some, from a flavor, from flavor town perspective, some me who I've always been a gourmet cook. I love filet mignon, T-bone steaks, uh, roasted pork, whatever it is. Uh, anything I can find that's going to substitute the texture and potentially the like the umami flavor of meat. For me, mushrooms were a godsend. Uh, again, episode on those mushrooms. You can't overcook them. I uh, cook them to get all of uh, the nutritional value, but they are just packed with nutrition and you really can't overdo them. And again, it's all about the seasoning and we've got several excellent mushroom recipes on our website. We They're free. Just go watch us make them. You'll yeah. really enjoy it. So that's just one good alternative. Now let's talk about tofu and tempeh. These are two ancient Asian foods that have been eaten as long, by over 10,000 years. If you were concerned about soy consumption, 
I would love, please take the time. If you have any questions, you should talk to Dr. Greger today. If he's available, he will tell you all the research to date shows soy consumption increases, uh, decreases the risk of breast cancer, the incidence of breast cancer. And if you already have breast cancer, it improves uh, the incorporation of soy, minimally processed soy in the form of tofu and tempeh will improve and lengthen your survival. And this is what all the research says to date. Don't listen to all the noise on the internet. Go right to the research. Okay. And you've got all the experts to talk to. You I hope you today. have a pencil nearby because I have the most, of, and I'm putting this on the website in the next week or so, four ingredients. It is the most amazing chocolate pudding you will ever have in your whole life. You take- Don't a, make it because you won't be able to stop eating oh it. Oh my gosh. So you've got the tofu you put in a food processor with a little bit of vanilla, and you use this cacao powder, cacao powder in the mix as well. So unbelievably fantastic. So those are, th those are three of the ingredients. What's the fourth one? Oh no, my dates. brain went crazy. Oh, and dates, I'm so sorry. We use, um, dates are our go-to for anything that we need sweetener. So when I make my black bean brownies or my chickpea cookies or my, my fudge, that the date is the sweetener. So it's the closest to, well, it's a date, right? So I use dates. And then you, you mix it all up in the food processor, this chocolate pudding mixture, put in the refrigerator for about an hour. Oh my gosh, four ingredients. It it's is, just, it's, it's good. Unbelievable. It's high in fat though. So if you're trying to lose weight, you definitely want it. You can't eat a lot of it. Limit. You can gain mm -hmm. weight if you're eating a lot of these higher fat foods. So you want to be careful yeah. of that. If weight management is your goal, and it is for most of us, uh, but I'm here to tell you, I eat as much food as I want. I never gain weight. I mean, I always had to worry about my weight, but as soon as I made this transition yeah. and eliminated oil from my diet, yeah. I, mean, I just can eat till my head explodes. Yeah. I never, I never think about it. And my blood pressure never changes either. Tofu tempeh, we love it. We've got several recipes on our website. Mm -hmm. A tofu or to, tempeh is fermented tofu and they're both fabulous. Just make sure they're organic. We're not saying eat tofu full time or tempeh full time to make that all your diet, but certainly as a condiment to, uh, as, a, as a meat analog or a meat substitute to make that transition, mm -hmm. they're great. And we continue to eat these foods today. We had, we had tofu bibimbap at a oh, Korean restaurant here in so Oceanside last good. night. We took our young, our middle son, Chris, oh. there, Chris there. Delicious. Find an awesome stir fry recipe. Where can you find one? Oh. Mindy has written a book. I've written a book. The Plant Powered Penis. I'm not going to say anything more about it. You just have to buy it. It's so great. And we've got, I've gotten amazing reviews on it. So it just came out. We, we finalized the book and uh, you can buy it on our website. You can buy it on Amazon. And it's a lighthearted, fun book at the very important subject of erectile dysfunction. This is not a laughing matter. Erectile dysfunction is primarily a foodborne illness, and you can eliminate it if you can step up to the plate and lean to the green as Minnie and I are talking about right now. So I have and a whole have... recipe section where I've got my chickpea cookies and I've got the fudge and I've got the black bean brownies. And I've, I mean, I've got a, a whole recipe section. And she has tips on the tips. You can get it at Amazon or One Day to Wellness. Here's what we want to avoid. Highly, this is where we go wrong. This is why we have so many concerns about, this is why you can't go get soy milk at Starbucks without getting in a fight with a barista. Uh, unfortunately, they're all pretty well. Uh, you want to avoid highly processed forms of soy, right? And, and that's what we want to steer away from. This is high, this fat in this, it's been fried. That's not a health food. Very processed. We can adulterate them. Anytime you start highly processing any type of food, you're losing nutrition and you're losing value. Uh, burgers. I've ate burgers my whole life. And I'm thinking about eating a burger today, but it won't be that one. You Where know, can you find mat. a great burger recipe? Go to our website and watch us make the back black bean quinoa burger. It's so a great good. substitute. It's awesome. And there it, there is, it is right there. A little avocado, maybe some. Okay, so here's a tip. Look, um, lots of people when they're transitioning, they want the same experience transitioning. transitioning. So what we would, do, Bruce and I do now is we don't use that bun. We actually put it on a collard wrap or we just use it just with a whole bunch of vegetables. We'll eat it. However, when you're transitioning, you want the same, you want the mouthfeel, you want the, you want the experience. experience. You want so that, that experience. bun, that bun's not healthy, but you know what? It's a good step. It's a good step to have the inside of that bun be something that's healthy 
promoting and then you got the outside the bun itself that's not so much but you know what it's better and then you have your oven baked fries for those of us um, recovering french fry holidays oh but you know what let me say one more thing about there i didn't we, we didn't show this this is called jackfruit and you can make a barbecue uh barbecue like pork yes yeah so it's a big it's a big tropical fruit that they pull the 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 center flesh from the fruit and they brine it in salt so mm -hmm. it is higher in salt but it is a wonderful substitute it, it will take on whatever flavor you season it with mm -hmm. uh, you can make that and your family come home and if they love barbecued pork which i eat a lot of before i transition mm -hmm. you can say oh it's barbecue pork they'll never know you know, or just say it's barbecue. <laughs> or just you know? say it's barbecue. <laughs> and you can use barbecue sauce. That's totally okay while you're transitioning. Yeah. But don't go buy the big jackfruit because it's this big mm -hmm. and it's really hard to maneuver. So this is why I just got at Trader Joe's. Mm -hmm. And then you want to put it in the sink in a colander and then sh shred it like this underwater. So you and can there's most a lot, of there are a lot of videos on the internet to how you yeah. can make delicious jackfruit. And they're available at most mm -hmm. farmers markets now you get jackfruit. Yep. Let's talk about uh, fish really quickly. I love fish. Minnie and I have both eaten fish most of our life. Sushi was my preferred uh, preparation. I consider myself to be a sushi connoisseur. I don't eat fish anymore. Uh, why? Primarily because all of it comes from farm fish, 90% of it. And when we farm our fish, we introduce all of the same problems uh, that we introduce to land animals when we put those animals in factory farms, including antibiotics, hormones, not their natural diet, that omega-3 content drops precipitously with farm fish because they're not eating their natural diet, which should be algae-based uh, or other fish. And it creates environmental problems. So what's a great transition? Seaweed can still give you that nice fish flavor. Uh, however, without all the saturated fat, cholesterol, and toxins that unfortunately that we have distributed into our ocean that now get lodged into the fat cells of the fish. And, uh, you know, fish is a tough one for me, and I understand a lot. Certainly fish is probably a better alternative moving away from uh, processed meats and animal foods. Fish is a better step based on the research to date. I think probably eliminating fish from your diet is not going to. Um, so I take one of these sheets. Have a negative impact, but a positive one. Yeah. So I take one of these sheets and what I do is I crush it up and I put it on my salad or we put it in our soup uh, or you make a nori wrap uh, with just a beautiful vegetables. It's wonderful. So one of these sheets flavor. a day. Uh, Bruce, for thyroid health. Well, it, actually, yes, yeah, seaweed is very high in iodine, and iodine is important for, for good thyroid health, especially as we get older. Uh, and so we got our thyroid creating all the hormones to, to make sure our metabolism is running smoothly. Seaweed is a great food mm -hmm. for your thyroid and, gland. Uh, just a quick Oops. tip <laughs> here, too. Uh, I buy this on Amazon but you want to make sure that in between usage, you seal it really yeah, well. Wanna, especially if you live in a humid environment. Yeah, so I actually put it inside another bag and then seal both. We've had this guy for, gosh, a month, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, it's still really fresh, but yeah. you have to keep it sealed. Well, let's talk about dairy. Um, we know that the Canadian government took dairy off of their food pyramid and their food plate oh, because Canada. of research, and that was a good move. Uh, what do we know? This is from the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And when they did their meta-analysis looking at all the research to date, they determined 60% increased risk in a hip fracture uh, for women who drink uh, three or more glasses of milk a day. Um, you increase your mortality risk by drinking three or more glasses of milk today. And for each glass of milk, risk of dying from all causes increases by about 15%. We won't go into the details today. Please reach out to us if you have any questions about this. The science, excuse me, the science is very solid. The dairy industry is very powerful with a tremendous amount of money to convince you that you need to be consuming the milk of another species, which we know is not what nature ever intended for any of us to do. If we could give you one piece of advice when you're moving towards a tran transitioning to a plant-based diet, Ditch Ditch dairy. dairy. There's no but you need have to look when it's a, a dairy product like this, you have to look at the label. Well, 
you always want to read a food label, always. And it's got to be minimal ingredients, ingredients that you recognize. But this is just organic soybeans and, and water. water. That's, it. That's it. There's another company called Elmhurst. It's in upstate New York. They actually were a dairy farm that they, they looked and saw what was happening with sales of dairy and they realized that it was pretty much shrinking so they retooled their whole factory and now they're making all plant milks artisanal plant milks and most of their plant milks are unsweetened they do have a sweetened brand so you have to watch out for that um, but just water and either the hazelnut or the almond or the cashew or whatever it is so our suggestion as you're transitioning try them all and see which one you like the best and just make sure there's no added ingredients in there and you're going to be fine yeah. and the, if it doesn't say no sugar added that the means the sugar added sorry i'm trying to plug my computer in so we don't lose the presentation here okay i'll keep going keep going keep yeah. going bruce all right so here's really quick about dairy and I used to I, I was a dairy holic and I had adult acne and I had flatulence and it was really it was tough but as soon as I gave up dairy I had no issues at all I mean so this is the biggest thing that's happened to me is giving up dairy because I, I, I used to work at a, at, a, at a milk pail dairy in in California so higher dairy dairy, uh, dairy intakes has been linked to increased uh, levels of prostate cancer and ovarian cancer triggering type Type 1 diabetes, uh, it, uh, cross populations consume more dairy, have higher rates of multiple sclerosis. Uh, dairy protein increases IGF-1 levels. And Bruce, really quick. Well, IGF-1 IGF is very important. It's like growth hormone 1. It's a hormone we're all born with. Our liver makes it naturally, so it, our, our body produces it. However, nature intends for the IGF-1 in our bodies to drop precipitously after we reach sexual maturation. Mm -hmm. So for, in our 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s, it should drop down significantly. Um, if we keep activating IGF-1 through the consumption of dairy, saturated fat, uh, and highly inflammatory foods, uh, we are increasing the level of IGF-1 in our bodies, and we now know IG, high levels of IGF-1 are directly linked to heart disease and cancer development. And I can assure you that my IGF-1 levels for most of my life were extremely elevated, primarily because of all the dairy I was eating up until age 50 when I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. And that's when I began doing the research. And there is a very strong link. All I can say is you do not, there's no human requirement for consuming dairy and you're gonna be much better off, you and your family, getting it out of your house mm -hmm. and out of your life. Show to promote increased cholesterol levels and atherosclerosis. And the primary uh, milk protein casein promotes cancer initiated by a carcinogen. So this is work that was done by Dr. T. Kong Campbell uh, initially, even prior to his work in China, the China study, where he determined that casein, which is the, the primary po protein in cow's milk, can actually be considered a, a class one carcinogen, just like cigarettes based on its effects mm -hmm. in animals. Mm -hmm. So before I, hang on one second, I forgot one thing. Remember when Jumping we around. told you about mushrooms, how they're a really good substitute for meat? I found this mushroom powder. I actually put this mushroom powder in my coffee every morning. Now there are different brands and, and different companies that make them, but you wanna look for organic mushroom powder and it's really, a fantastic food. But I do want to talk to you about this. It says it's a superfood. What does a superfood mean? Many people transitioning will want to look for what's the best food, right, to eat. Well, it's really, first of all, the food that you'll eat, right? The food that you like. Can I, can I say something? Yes. The term superfood well, is a it. sales and mar I know the news. <laughs> It's a sales and marketing. There's no such thing as, what are superfoods? The foods that grow out of the ground. There's not one super, super, super food that's gonna be more super than, and if you see that super do marketing, you're being sold to probably with not a lot of information. All whole plant-based foods should be considered superfoods. And the problem with superfoods is, oh, all I have to do are eat these pomegranates and I can continue to eat my disease-promoting diet mm -hmm. as long as I include pomegranates in it. 
don't do it. Well, it's like a daily <laughs> vitamin. It's like I can, I can eat my daily vitamin and that's going to be my insurance that I can eat all the other bad foods. However, when I, did all, the, when I did all the research for my book, I did find that there are a couple superfoods for erectile function. And one is, well, anything that delivers blood flow to your groin is going to help. And that's all the plant foods. But I did find uh, rind pistachios. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> Put them in a blender. They're going to so have a great I, night. So that's what I feed Bruce every single day. Watermelon rind. If you would like to know more about the, the dairy cancer connection and um, cancer in general and the foods that we eat, um, I have just released a new book. It's called A Plant-Powered Approach to Prostate Cancer. Prostate cancer is the second leading cancer diagnosed uh, in the world in men and right after skin cancer. It's deadly, uh, and it has a tremendous impact on men's life. This book is an a unfiltered review of my nine-year experience dealing with prostate cancer. In the first half of the book, and the second half of the book is a deep dive into the scientific research of why the foods we eat are connected to the cancers that we develop, especially later in life, and what we can do once we've been diagnosed with cancer with those same foods to dig ourselves out of that problem. Uh, I think it's a great book and it's available on our website and at Amazon. Uh, the electronic copy is available right now and the hard copy will be available next week or the week after mm -hmm. that. Yep. Also, I have interviews with Dr. Greger, Dr. T. Colin Campbell, uh, Dr. Neil Bernard, Dr. Um, Gordon Sachs, Gordon Sachs uh, Dr. Lawrence. Clapper, Dr. Mm -hmm. Abrams from the OSHA Cancer Center. It's, it's just a really, really good book Indefinite. about all the, it's not about all the great treatments you're gonna get medical treatments. You can deal with that. This is about everything else you can do along with those, whatever you're mm -hmm. doing. To, fight your battle. But I love dairy. Oh, what what I, I, I was dead. addicted to dairy. I ate two milkshakes every Do day. Do you like yeah. ice cream? Okay, your students are going to say something. They're going to say, oh, oh I can't give up. Perfect. I can't give up cheese or I can't give up milk or I can't give up. And what you say to them is, I hear you. Always agree with your clients and students when they say something, not like, oh, you're weak. Oh, no, never. You say, I agree. I, I don't think fear. anybody's going to tell am. their, if they're a trainer, they're going to tell their clients, you are weak. I tell you that sometimes when you want to go for the chips, I say, Bruce, you're weak. Don't eat those chips. I mean, because Bruce goes by some place and grabs a chip here or there. Anyway, but we're all human. Okay. If you love ice cream, this is something spectacular. Um, coconut milk ice cream would be great, but you I've got, that you were yes, I've got something even better. Bruce actually changed the slide. I I <laughs> what I really love is I love something called the Yo Nana Maker. Ready? Um, yo, Y-O, Nana, like a banana. So what you do, what it's, a, it's a, like a little machine. It costs like 40 bucks, 50 bucks on Amazon and or anywhere walmart.com or whatever and what you do is you take out the plunger and then you put in frozen old gross bananas without peel, peel and it goes like this and it comes out like dairy queen and you can add any other um uh, fruits or whatever it is so good if you're an ice cream holic like i was it's a great alternative i saw that device come into the house the yonana and i said there is no way that you're gonna put those gross disgusting bananas in mm -hmm. that thing and i'm gonna like it and I got to tell you, out the other side came Dairy Queen. It's I'm so not good. kidding. It it's was so great. good. Really so, yeah, and it's really fun to, to have it for the kids too. So if you if you are working with clients that have grandchildren uh, or it's children, fun. it's really fun. It's fun. Okay. Next, we talked about this already. Hemp milk is great because it gets you high. No, just kidding. That was, milk is that wonderful. Was a joke. Make sure it's motherless. Motherless. And don't don't over don't. We don't recommend drinking it. Use it as a condiment right. uh, for your coffee or whatever you're drinking, your tea or whatever. And then with cooking, it's great. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what's that? We call that casein candy. So that's really, it's just a very highly processed, sugary yuck. Animal food. Yeah. And so look for, uns whenever you're reading the front of the label, first of all, don't believe the front of the label. If it says natural, that doesn't mean anything. If it says you just have to go around and look at the back of the, the label. But if it says unsweetened, it's unsweetened. Uh, it's cultured or we would like to organic for sure. And so that's good too. All right. What about cheese? We love cheese. And if you love cheese, we found a perfect alternative. It's called nutritional yeast. So I have it here. 
and there it is. This is fantastic. So on our website, I have a lasagna recipe that will just knock your socks off. And the, the thing about nutritional yeast is it's a fungus, so it's very similar uh, nutritionally to mushrooms. And it grows on strap molasses and it's highly nutritious. It's got a great mm -hmm. B vitamin profile. Uh, and it also, most of the nutritional yeasts have B12, uh, for, they're fortified with B12, so you get that B12 in there. But you want to make sure we have adequate B12. You want to get your B12 checked and your D12, che your D checked uh, as you transition to eating this way. And you want to make sure you include your physician in your journey and let them know what you're doing because if you're on some medications, there's a good likelihood, high blood pressure medication in particular, you're gonna come off of those pretty quickly if you do, are su su successful in this direction. And with that really quick, um, I wanna tell you, cashews uh, soaked, then like I soak my cashews overnight, then I put in this nutritional yeast into a fruit processor with uh, onion and garlic powder and a lot of lemon. And it tastes like Parmesan cheese. Oh, it tastes, and you make, you make a delicious so lasagna. Good. You will not miss the cheese. Oh. And this is a this is a go-to tool to start mm -hmm. making that transition. Mm -hmm. uh, make your own almond milk. It's simple. There's a cup of almonds. Soak mm -hmm. them overnight. And you soaking some almonds right there. Needing a manicure. This is how easy it is. Overnight, then next day, what do you do? You take that, you buy a little cheesecloth, you filter that water. I could actually use that water. You're gonna put those almonds in a blender. Right, and there they go in the blender, and you put that's one cup of almonds, three to four cups of water. Mm -hmm. I like three. Just blend it up right there. Next, to turn into a white liquid, and then you're gonna go back through that cheese filter or filter again to just pull out some of the. That's and you can use this pulp uh, for baking, which is full of fiber mm -hmm. and is healthy and delicious, and that is delicious almond milk. It stays in the refrigerator for just a couple days. There goes some on your oatmeal, but we don't eat oatmeal anymore. We now we eat groats. groats. Let's talk quickly about oil. I think we've got uh, about 10 minutes left, yeah. and maybe there's some questions. Experts say vegetable oil may not be as helpful as we thought it isn't. Don't let people market to you telling you oil doesn't come from nature. Oil comes from factory factories. It's 100% oil. It's 120 calories 100 per table. Oil. I'm sorry, 100% <laughs> fat or oil. It's 120 <laughs> calories per tablespoon. It is the most energy calorically dense thing you can put in your body. So if you're putting that olive oil on your salad, you are just adding empty calories, condensed instant, empty calories that are going to attach to your hips. Uh, all oil is low in nutrients. It's all been through a tremendous processing um, uh, routine. There's all the fibers been eliminated through the processing and it's stored immediately in your body as fat. It turns out oil is highly inflammatory to our arteries. If you'd like to know more information about that, Dr. Greger could certainly explain it to you. Also, I've got some more information about the work that Dr. Uh, Robert Vogel has done at the University of Maryland demonstrating uh, oil's ability to shut down our endothelial lining so our blood doesn't flow well. Well, what do you use instead of oil, especially cooking? A oh my gosh! People, when we, we, we lead our courses, um, it is really in it, tough because everyone has always used oil and has always been told that oil is a health promoting food. So it's it's really hard to be told the opposite, and because that's been my whole life. So what do you use? I mean, it's really easy. Um, vegetable broth, but when you're cooking with vegetables, you're actually making vegetable broth. So I, I don't buy vegetable broth anymore. Um, if I am steaming some vegetables, I'll actually take that, that uh, liquid and I will put it in the refrigerator. It doesn't last long. It lasts like one to two days. So that's the thing about whole food plant-based eating. They don't last very long and that's good. They rot quickly. Wine, wine's fantastic. It adds flavor and you know, you pour a little bit in there and then a little bit in here. It's fantastic. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Water is fantastic too. Or as we talked about before, balsamic oh. vinegar. Spend more money on balsamic vinegar. Okay, eggs really quick. Bruce. Eggs. Everybody loves eggs and has a difficult time when they learn that eggs are not a health promoting food. 70% uh, of their calories are from saturated fat. They're loaded with cholesterol. Both we know we don't want to consume primarily for heart health, but overall metabolic health. 
Uh, people who consume just one and a half eggs per week had nearly five times the risk for colon cancer. That's a, a meta-analysis that was published in the International Journal of Cancer recently. Eating eggs is linked to developing prostate cancer. I do a deep dive in the world of eggs in my book, A Plant-Powered Approach to Prostate Cancer. I ate eggs my whole life, and I know it was a contributor to my uh, prostate cancer development, and that's from research done by the National Institutes of Health. People who consume the most egg, in, eggs increase their risk of diabetes. I mean, you know, we've got exploding diabetes crisis in our country and so many people still think they should be eating eggs. That's from the atherosclerosis journal saying don't eat eggs if you're at risk of diabetes. They're also the leading cause of salmonella poisoning. I have eaten eggs my whole life. I know how delicious they are. But Bruce, I'm a And baker. I know I'm you love baker. to bake. You've got to find another, well, there are alternatives, flax eggs, for example. I don't think I have that in here, but okay. there are wonderful egg alternatives primarily. Yeah, you can just take ground flax seeds, whip up some water, and bake. Yep, yep, that's right. Okay. Let's just skip through here. Let's okay, through well, we there. do have a kosher's corner, so we've got some things you can do there. It's half off now. Boo. There, oh, there we is. go. There it is. Okay. All right, so you can go on you know, the internet. If you're ever wondering about a substitute for an animal foods, just go to the internet. There's so many great websites out there. But I will actually in the morning, if Bruce wants French toast, you people think I can't make French toast or an oh, omelet without an egg. It's so great. You just take the, you take a really hearty bread and then you whisk up the, the one tablespoon of, of ground flaxseed with two and a half tablespoons of water. Now, I do want to tell you this about flaxseed. We want to put ground flaxseed into our body every day, one to two tablespoons. So Bruce and I, you uh, put ground flaxseed. So every three or four days, we're going to grind that flaxseed um, in a coffee grinder, and then we're going to put it in our freezer. And then every three or four days, I do it again because ground flaxseed is very important. You don't want to buy ground flaxseed that's already been ground, oxidizes very quickly. So this is something it takes about a minute to do, but it's a very important minute that you need to spend. And we want to incorporate a couple um, tablespoons of ground flaxseed into our diet primarily because there are only two essential fatty acids that we need. And, and one of them happens to be ALA, alpha linolenic acid, happens to be well represented in flax seeds and walnuts too. Several, almost all nuts and seeds have some level of ALA. And this, this is the only essential omega-3 fatty acid that you need. Your body can take that, elongate it, and make the EPA, DHA, which is what we, need, we used to eat fish for, right? But because the fish is all farmed now with low levels of DHA, EPA, essential fatty acids, we want to lean on the green side through flax seeds to get that. That's oh, gonna take too long. That's yeah. like just do a, this is, That's really funny. That. Okay, we're not <laughs> to, but if, in the fitness industry, we do wanna talk about this. There are a lot of fitness bars and shakes and all of that. We just want to make sure that you're eating something that's closer to the all, source. All so, we're saying is avoid the marketing. Yeah. And you don't need to buy $9 candy bars with a laundry list of ingredients, just dates, walnuts, a little bit of dried fruit before you work out, mm -hmm. uh, a walnut to satiate yourself. That's what, you, that's what your body wants. Your body wants glucose. Right. It wants sugar before you work out. It doesn't want to have to metabolize protein. That is not one you want to consume. And I know we protein. talked about there's, you know, like there's really, you want to look at the whole, not, not just little superfoods. However, before you work out, there is some really the good research. Yeah, but Dates there, and beet juice. But there, beet juice. So uh, an eight ounce shot of beet juice has been shown to increase your athletic performance by 15 to 20%. So just try just it. Just make yourself a smiley face out of dried fruits, nuts, and, and have but don't peaches. eat too much of it. Dried fruit, yeah. again, you can eat more sugar than you can start driving up your sugar levels eating a lot of dried fruit. So you want to be careful. It's, it's all the natural fruit, but the water's been removed. But if you are grabbing a bar or one of these drinks, you maybe aren't um, looking for the best nutrition. You're looking just because you want that taste. Well, you, like everyone, we've been marketed. The reason the entire country is overweight is one word. Marketing. Marketing. Look at all this. So now Gatorade tells us we have to drink these colored flavored juices in order to work out. Not true. Just drink some coconut water or water before you work mm -hmm. out. If you have a sweet tooth, coconut water. Here's another nice little thing about coconut water I didn't learn about. If you're sauteing and you want to crisp up 
your tofu or your beans, put a little coconut water on there because the sugar will caramelize and crisp it up. Yeah. Other cravings, pizza, how easy is it to make a delicious whole wheat, whole grain, or even a gluten-free pizza? There's all these great, uh, Engine One is a wonderful company. Engine Two? I'm saying Engine Two, <laughs> or you get, it's an exclusive Whole Foods product line, but they have- No uh, oil, no sugar. No oil, no, no fats, sugar, no. Um, pasta sauce, uh, and hummus too. Yeah. Forget the French fries. Talked about that. Yep. Go with the baked ones. I, I I don't really even have that craving for French fries anymore until I look at that golden arches. Uh, milk chocolate. Go to dark chocolate and it's still easy. at least go seventy two percent. Try eighty. Try ninety. You know that's you're just pushing down the sugar levels and pushing up the chocolate content. Chocolate has some wonderful antioxidants, antioxidants. in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think that's pretty much it. Mindy and I are going to be doing for the first time this year in October, a four day retreat. We've had so many people ask us, we understand we need to eat plant-based. How do you do it? This is a four day immersion with us with wonderful, mindful, health promoting activities. And we're gonna show you every single day how to make stunningly delicious food. Right there that you will be able to eat. Oh, sorry for the rest of your life. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yep, so there it is. We're limiting the <laughs> oh, only to 24. Oh, okay. And that's our, well, that's yeah. our online course too. Yeah. So we've got some products. So check us out. Um, we love to get engaged with you more and we're here to help. Yeah, yeah. And the last thing too is we do have a home study course. Uh, because you came today, you um, actually get 50% off. So it's only $99 if you would like to. Just use the word home study at checkout and on our website. And everything that is purchased on our website goes to our nonprofit, One Day to Wellness. It does not go to um, a new car. Is it? Yeah, um, it okay, so questions yeah, questions? that. So. I don't know what that is. Why don't you click, I on, can't... Don't you click on that? Okay. Questions, comments, concerns, chat box. Chat. Oh, you're looking at it. Here we go. Oh, Cody's been answering. Yeah, Yay. I'm on it. Yeah, right. I'm on it. Oh, you thank are you, Cody. So Great. On it, Cody. I'm all over it. Well, Good. One, one question that came in, though, was about buying bulk raw cashews. Like, where's the best place to get a good oh, price I, on them? Because they can you. be pretty expensive. Yeah, they can. And so, I, I don't know what the answer is, but I'm going to guess it's Costco or Amazon. <laughs> Look, Amazon, I just bought them. We, we got nuts. Where'd you get those from? Because Amazon. Amazon uh, because okay. I use so many cashews because I make so much cashew cheese. Uh, we're actually, when we're not down here, we're living at my brother's house right now during COVID. And he is an Italian stallion. So I have to make him all Italian food. <laughs> and so I've been making a lot of lasagna and... Um, uh, what what uh, eggplant parmesan and spaghetti and we're trying to lean him to the green he, we call him carnivore tim t-bone tim t -bone actually tim. <laughs> and sometimes we we do uh, dinners with with tim and we show how you can take a traditional meal and then transform it into a plant-based meal and this is what we will be doing in october it's what we love to do you know, like i love this meal how do i make it completely plant-based we'll right. do it for you we'll show you how to do it and it'll be better right yeah right Good. So, hey, um, for uh, kind of going back to some of your transition experiences, because, you know, I, uh, I went plant based about two years ago and, you know, it is it is a transition process. You know, the first time my first attempt was to just go at it completely. You know what I'm saying? Just jump right into it. I did that for about two months and I was like, something's wrong here. You know, I, I wasn't quite getting it figured out. So I kind of backed up a little bit, learned some more, and yeah. then realized, oh, yeah, I was just, you know, my food choices were really all over the place and trying to eat like 10 pounds of beans a day, which just, you know, <laughs> makes you feel awful. It just, it was too much. And so, right. kind of, you know, I don't know where people are in kind of their, uh, their transition, um, but, you know, what are some other, you know, little tips that you have for, for kind of making that uh, change over. Yeah, great, well, great question. You bring up a really good point is it, it, it does require some attention. I mean, mm -hmm. you do want to make sure you're getting adequate protein, carbohydrates in your, it's, it's not difficult to do. I think that one mistake that I've learned that a lot of people make is they think, oh, I'm going to go plant-based, so I need to eat salad. 
right? And I've got to eat all these leafy yeah. green vegetables as the, yeah. as the majority of my diet. And you just can't satiate yourself doing that, Cody. Uh -huh. you, and you probably, if you tried it, you probably know that. Mm -hmm. You've got to have, and this is where the beans and the lentils and the mushrooms come in, where you've got something that's got more protein and complex carbohydrates in the form of tubers and beans and that type of thing that are going to provide that satiation. Yeah, but when you go to more fibrous so full foods, gra whole grains, and, whole beans. Yeah, and and the fiber is found in the in the plant kingdom, not in the animal kingdom. So people transitioning might have had very little fiber, and now they're getting a lot of fiber. So their all their gut biome is really changing. Yeah, so as yeah. we mentioned before, the beans, because people are thinking, uh oh, I'm not getting that protein. But if you think about it, protein is in almost all foods yeah so you don't need to be concerned about the protein right consumption. right it's more so about like the arugula and spin spinach has i think it's 30 percent protein mm -hmm. so if you if you don't think about if you just think about eating food and not i need to eat more protein rich food that i think is protein rich food you want to look at from the whole plant kingdom you're going to get adequate protein if, but, I, if I could make a recommendation uh, dr john mcdougall uh, has written a book called The Starch Solution, Cody. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's basically like, yes, plant-based eating is really important, but plant-based eating means eating 80% of your diet is in whole grains and legumes, you know, with the other, with, with uh, some fruits and, and vegetables mixed in there. But it's, it's complex whole grains and legumes that have made up the majority of the diets of the longest lived people for eons. And so that's, and that's what we try to focus on. And it's really been, it's mm -hmm. been, and this, that's, that's that, that really is, it's an excellent book. There's no one that has more depth of knowledge in the research on plant-based nutrition than John McDougal, other than probably Dr. Greg. <laughs> yeah. This is the other book I really recommend. It's called Proteinaholic for people that are transitioning uh, with this, in the fitness industry, especially with this huge push for more and more and more protein, it, it, he definitely does a deep dive and he's got a tremendous story. He was a gastro, uh, gastric, he's, he's a gastric bypass surgeon, surgeon mm -hmm. and a well-known one. Yeah. Right? And he was on the, the TLC's. He my, actually developed a 600 pound life show with his dad. Garth, oh, Garth wow. Davis. Yeah. And he, and he learned, said, yeah, he was, he was coaching his patients to eat more protein and then he, did the research he's like what am i doing here yeah. <laughs> yeah. well we've got to go but i want to invite everybody to uh come back to our little q a a little open share time uh later on that's going to be at 4 15 eastern so i'll have about half an hour to kick around any ideas and questions and get into some other areas and dr gregor will be joining us for that uh then following that we will have dr gregor on as a keynote and uh so hopefully if you have not heard Dr. Greger speak, uh, you really need to watch that. That's, it's really packed with all the research-based information um, to, to feel good about this transition, right? There's a yes, lot of nutrition absolutely. confusion, you know, and there's a lot of emotions about eating. This is crazy. Oh, it's so emotional. It's all, it's oh all about emotions. It is. It's, it's all emotions. And, <laughs> and, and, and people put themselves in camps, you know, they're mm -hmm. like, I'm the paleo guy and I'm the keto guy and I'm the, yeah. I'm the whole food plant-based guy. And it's not, it's not a camp. It, we're all in one camp and we're all yeah. trying to do figure it out. And, yep. and so if anyone has any questions for us that we did not answer, definitely reach out to us. Um, it's info at one day to wellness.org. And we will answer you is this, and we would love to connect with you and join our newsletter. Um, join, come on board. Well, we thank you guys.